Good morning. I'm here today because I'm going to talk a little bit about needle felting. Um, and I want to show you a little bit about it and how it's done. So my name's Gemma and I am a needle felting artist um, and I run Needle Felting Gym. Um, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, I post a lot of my things on there. Um, so to start off, I thought I would show you. These are some of the hairs that I make. So they come in different sizes. Um, this this guy is my favourite, to be honest. I've done a bigger one and a couple of smaller ones. Um, and if you can see, they've got nice eyes in two. So yeah, uh, let's begin and I will show you, I'll try my best to show you how we do it. So let's put them up there. So to begin with, you're gonna need some type of wire. Um, this type of wire, I can't exactly remember what thickness it is, but it's only very fine and it's it's gardening wire. Think about it from B&M. <clears throat> um, so you're gonna need, if we just do, for the purpose of this video, we'll, we'll, we'll start small. And it's going to depend on how big you want your hair to be, how big, you know, how much wire you cut. So to start with, I always kind of bend the shape of the ears. It only needs to be very rough because anything that you don't add at this point, you can easily add later on. So, that was an arm. And I normally do, I normally do quite big feet too, because I love how the hairs look when they've got the really big back feet. And to be honest, when, you, when you've made a lot of different sizes like I have, when you start off bending the wire, um, if you haven't made yourself a template, it's a bit of a gamble how big it's going to be. But it's not the end of the world if it doesn't quite match. All right, so this is kind of... This is what's inside. So this is the armature. Um, and eventually, once we've, once it looks more hair-like, it will stand up and be propped against something. So, um, I'm not gonna talk too much about needles because I don't know a great deal about the needles. I just know which ones work for me. Um, you need a needle felt a needle. Um, you can get different sizes. The bigger needles are better for condensing your wool and making it firm. The smaller the needle, um, the better it is for detail and things like that. So that's kind of what I go on. But I have a whole bunch of needles and I tend to just use what feels right because I've kind of got used to what feels right for what thing. Um, I have this one, actually one's snapped in it, but this holds many. Um, that's good if you if you wanted to get through quite a lot of felt in. Sometimes you have to work it to, to make it the um, firmness that you want. But I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna start with this. I think it might be a medium sized needle. And this is the one that I always use. It's my favorite. 
Okay, so you're going to want some core wool. What you're going to do is, you can do this two ways. You can either wrap straight on, or if it's slipping off, you can actually hot glue it on. But for this bit, it shouldn't be so bad. So I'm literally just wrapping. And then what I'll do is, I'll get my needle. Sorry, put that a bit more in the middle for you. And we're gonna fill it on a little bit. At this stage, it's, it's not, it doesn't matter if it's messy. Okay, so. Same with the other ear. Wrapping and felt it to keep it on. Just a few times in the middle, up the middle will be fine. Okay. So. Now I'm going to try and wrap some of the body. So because this is a demonstration, it's not going to be as, as felted as it would be if I was doing it um, as an order. Just because it'll be really boring to sit and watch if I did it all and made it as compact as I needed it to be but when you guys do it you can um, pause and restart the video if you want and spend some time getting it how you like right so so the core wool is um what I use for pretty much the middle of all of my things, apart from the really small things I don't use the core wool for because I can just use whatever wool I would normally put on top. Um, if you are a beginner at needle felting, you can actually get some pretty nice little sets. Um, they will have finger protectors inside, which is always good when you first start because no matter how hard you try, you always do get your fingers. And I still get my fingers now, um, but obviously practice helps. So you want to felt on both sides, so just flip it. Felt it on at the back. Right, so this is what it's looking like so far. <laughs> Give him a bit of a neck and then it might look more like it's meant to be. Sorry about that banging. I, my neighbor's having some building work done <laughs> Unfortunately, it's today when I've decided to film this, um, which is why I've got the the music running quietly in the background just to try and cover it up. But hopefully, it won't disturb us too much. Right. So. Even without as much felting as it needs, you can see it's beginning to take some shape, which is nice to see. Right. Right, let's do my favorite bits. The feet, I love the feet. I 
I feel like when I make these hairs, um, I have house rabbits who live downstairs in a room off my kitchen. And one of the rabbits that we have, um, he looks more like a hare than a pet rabbit. He's very curious. Right. Let's see. So we have so far don't worry about it, it looking wonky right now all of that can be bent back straight um, and anything that's a bit lumpy bumpy we can work on top of um, at the end point you can add stuff um, or as you're going along um, it's pretty forgiving to um, in terms of if you do make a mistake um, it's there's usually a way of resolving it it's not too complicated right so what I might actually do just so I can show you the next part is um, I have a needle felting gun that I sometimes use. Um, I mostly use the needle that I'm using now for things. Um, but occasionally, if I'm doing bigger things, like the bigger hair that I showed you at the beginning, it does, it does take some time. So, it's a good little tool. I'll show you. So this is my needle felt and gun. Um, I haven't had it very long, so I'm still kind of getting used to it. Just turn it on. I'm just gonna give this. <clears throat> so with the needle felt and gun, it's got three needles in it. Um, so obviously it saves, saves time. So when you get used to needle felt in just by hand very strange to then have something take the you know the hardest part out but helpful for this demonstration so there we go right Right, we can get thicker parts of the core wool now to fatten him up a bit. So I do right around the middle. Um, so he's got a bit of a chubby belly. And you're just going to keep tearing some wool off, wrapping it and felting it. Um, you can keep adding it to make the shape that you need. Um, and then eventually when it's all very firm and nothing's moving up and down the wire, um, you can look at adding some, whichever colour you choose to use. So when I've done the ears a bit more, I'll show you. I've got some grey, but you could do it whatever colour you wanted. 
So the, usually the wool that I use for the top coat is um, a short fibre wool. Um, I've got Berg Schaff, I think it is. That's the one that I use a lot because the, the long fibre wool is quite difficult to work with. Um, although that said, it's quite good for, if you're making people, um, it's quite good for hair, clothes, and if, if you're making a fairy, it's quite good for wings. But the, the shorter fibres um, knot together easier than the longer fibres. And that's what we want. We want it all to knot together. Right, so this is what it looks like so far. A bit lumpy bumpy, but we get the idea. Okay. So, like I said, it's nowhere near felted to what it needs. You'd need to keep going at it for quite some time. Um, but I'll show you what happens next. So, this would be the wool that I'm using. It's like a nice grey colour. Um, and then, you can do it a couple of ways. You can either tear bits off and felt it on. Or if you wanted to do whole areas, depending on how thick you want to lay it across, you could lay it across and fill it on. So, if you're wanting it all to be grey, that's fine. But sometimes I leave, I either leave the tummy um, I either leave the tummy and do the tummy a little bit of a different colour or um, sometimes I use my needle felting tool um, and it's a reverse, it's a reverse needle. So what happens is, in, instead of compacting, condensing, the tool, it pulls the fur out, so you can give like a really cute kind of fuzzy look. But then you you go back and you you could use your needle to put it as you want it. Don't know if that's easy for you to see or not. Right, so. You want to keep going. Um, once it's the shape that you want it in and it's as firm as it needs to be, I'll show you how to do the face after. Wrap it all in grey. It's always better to go th a little bit thicker for the feet and then it, it will stand up easier. Um, so, with the face, um, I'll show you with this one. Right, so with the face, he has the mouth, which is, imagine it's two, so it's two circles. Well, the mouth's down there, actually, that's the cheeks. So you need two circles. So you can do this with the car wool or, well, you can do it with white if you wanted, but I'm gonna do it with the car wool. So we can either, where did I put that needle now? Right, so you can use your fingers to roll it in a ball. And then make a little bit of a circle. Turn and fill it. And then what you want to do is you're going to fill it onto his face. So, you want them to be the, the same size, two the same size. Right. 
Can you see where I'm felting them on? Right next to each other, that's the one that I'm doing. Okay. So if you try and take your needle and felt around the circles rather than on top, because all you'll do eventually is flatten the circle. So go around it. Um, sort of felt felt the edges on right so with the hair he has okay so what I do is we're gonna want a strip it's going to go above the cheeks and up the middle. So I'm going to kind of felt this as we go along, but we're only probably going to use half of it. So you're going to felt it on, it's going to touch the top of the cheeks, but not go down the middle. So felt. fact what I'm going to do is because I've got too much I'm going to go back down it because I needed it to be a bit thicker anyway so I'm going back down the middle um, you can fold it over to make the nose a bit more pronounced so what it's going to do is it's going to be you're going to be able to see the bridge part of the nose and it's going to meet the top of the cheeks and slightly overlap very slightly Obviously, because I've not given it as much felt in time as I need, it's more difficult for me to add the shape. But just to give you an idea. So this is his nose and these are his cheeks. Okay, so kind of, if you can kind of keep that line. Um, and you want it to be you want it to be quite um, quite firm by the time you've finished felting it. Because his eyes are going to sit either side of his nose. So you want it to be um, firm enough for them to fit. Um, and if the side bits you need to add more, then you can add more. There's, it's no worries if it's not quite the shape you want it to be. So I'm just adding a bit because it, it had a bit too much of a dip. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of, make it less dipped in at that side too. And then what you'll do is, underneath the cheeks, you're going to make him a little mouth. So, 
Just roughly roll it up into a ball. You can either felt it a little bit into a ball before you start, or you can felt it when it's on its face, whatever's easiest for you. So the little mouth is going to just be underneath the cheeks. <laughs> felt it a bit too much and now they're a bit flat so but that's fine you can get a bit and add it on um or if you if you end up having a bit that's not quite right and it's quite felted on you can either try and unpick it or you could try and cut that section off and start again it depends what what you're trying to correct, I guess. Right, let's have a look here. So the mouth part doesn't want to be as big as the cheeks. It wants to be um, just a little bit. I'll show you one sec. Right, ignore the top of the nose. We've not finished that bit yet, but as far as the mouth, it's only very tiny. So cheeks, mouth, just at the bottom. What you can do is you can buy, you can buy eyes or you can felt the eyes on. Um, I put plastic eyes in mine. Um, and if you do want to do that, you can order them online. Um, what I normally do is decide where the eyes are going to be um, and then because the eyes that I've got are more like the screw type eyes um, I can use, there's a tool that you sometimes get that's for making holes in your felt for things like that for the eyes um, but it won't do it with the screw eyes it'd be too difficult to make a hole for so if you get the end of your scissors and just snip out a hole um i find that works and then i i use i use craft glue and um, once once i've positioned it in a way that i know that it's where i want it to be i take the craft glue and i put a little bit in the hole of the where the eye is going to go um and then I pop the eye in. As long as I don't mess with it too much, it should stay where it is and dry that way. Right, I need to make this guys. Right, so your eyes, I'm going to make his face wider but for this his eyes will be about here and here but they'll be they're looking out because their eyes are on the side rather than on the front so they're more like here if you see like that what I did with the mine was at the end point um I drew him some I drew I needle felted him some um lines in his feet so that you could sort of see where the toes were um and I added some detail around his eye a good thing to do is if you if you go on your Google Images um, and you search for hair, 
um, if you have a good look at what the eyes look like, um, the picture of the one that I was using, it has white, like a bit of a white circle around its eye. Um, so that's quite cute. Just gonna make this guy's nose a bit bigger. Cause I feel like his cheeks are a bit big. And from his nose, his head, well, his head comes out here and then down into the nose. So now we've got a bit of a line to go off. We want to fill a bit of a... a better shape for the head, shall we say. Right, so that's kind of the shape. So keep wrapping, keep felting, um, and then when you reach the point where you're doing the chest and the ears, um, you can add whatever you want, but just be careful when you, if you go all the way through, you're going to be pushing the colour from the from the front right through. So a bit of a trick is if you, you kind of do really shallow felt in or try and go through and back through the same sort of layer, that'll avoid it going all the way through. Um, I use a reverse needle here to make it fluffy. Um, and I added lines for his toes just with white. And in fact, I used um, the longer fibre wool for that just because it's easier to do and it makes a, a cleaner line. With his tail, I I felt it a shape of almost like a leaf shape in grey, just on my mat. I felt it a leaf shape and then I felt it a little bit of white leaf in the middle and then I felt it onto his bottom and the white is always on the outside. Um, they show the white of their tail um, to warn their friends that there's danger. So it's like a flash of white so that the friends see when they're running away and they're flashing their tail. So you've always got to have the white visible. Fun fact there for you. Um, I used, this is long fibre wool. So I used this for the scarf and I used it for doing his the line for the mouth and you you literally just very carefully follow the line that you want down um, and same for any of the details really um, I hope I've given you enough idea of how to do it without it being too boring um, but enough detail for you to be able to do what you need if you have any questions please feel free to bob onto my page um, send me a message and I'll explain or let you know anything that I've missed on here. So thank you for joining me. Bye.